it's one thing to speculate about the afterlife or to interview those who were revived after being clinically dead. But what if such conjectures merely distract us from a profounder, more chilling possibility that we're already in the afterlife right now? In hollow dreams, the mandrake grows Between the symbols row on row That mark our place While in the sky, the crow still calling warning Fly unheard, fly unheard amid the bump below. To put 900 pages of Philip K. Dick's exegesis into a nutshell, what if we are dead but don't know it, reliving our former lives as if on tape, programmed in a simulated world controlled by some master reality generator like Brahma, where we relive in a virtually closed cycle again and again until we manage to add enough new good decision making to trigger off divine intervention, which wakes us up and causes us to simultaneously both remember and forget so that we can begin our reascent back up to our real home. Our current world, as PKD posited, is purgatory or the afterlife, and we are under constant scrutiny and judgment, but don't know it, in a perfect simulation of the world we knew and remember. This very much recalls PKD's exquisite novel, Ubik. We have for a long time been dying brains, souls, slipping lower and lower through the realms, but PKD suggested that the punishment of reliving this bottom realm life is also an opportunity to add new good karma and break the vicious cycle of otherwise endless reliving of a portion of our former life. We are dead, don't know it, and mechanically relive our life in a fake world until we get it right. Mott has already judged us. We are punished, but it's not too late to change the balance. Yet we don't fully realize that we're here to do this, let alone know where we are. As PKD put it, we must change the groove for the better or just keep coming back, not remembering, not reascending. We are the dead. Lifetimes ago we lived, praised dawn, even tides go. Gloved and fox gloved, and now we dwell in hollowed cleaves. We hear something complimentary in Charles Fort's wonderful Wild Talents. Ford's suspicion was that we've got everything reversed, that all things that have the sanction of scientists or that are in agreement with their myths are ghosts, and that things called ghosts, because they are not in agreement with the spooks of science, are the more nearly real things. Ford suspected that the spiritualists are reversedly right, that there is a ghost world, but that it is our existence And when spirits die, they become human beings. Fort theorized that once upon a time, we were real and alive, but we departed into this state that we call existence, carrying over with us from the real existence, the principles and axioms of truth ideas that really meant something when we were really alive, but that of course now in our phantom existence can only have phantom meaning. Hence, our never ending but always frustrated search for lost reality. We come up chimeras and mystifications, persistently believing in them, 
as retentions from an experience in which there were things to believe in. Fort did not presume that all of us are directly ghosts. Most of us may be the descendants of the departed from a real existence, who in our spook world, pseudo-propagated. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it hard. If ye break faith with us who've died, Sleep, though mandrakes grow in hollowed caves. Cottered or walking corpse syndrome is what psychiatrists call the delusion that one is already dead. The thrice great Charles Fort had it, as did the immortal Philip K. Dick, as do adherents of Tibetan Buddhism who consider sleeping, dreaming, waking, and dying all to be liminal spaces. The thing is, if this life actually does turn out to be a purgatorial realm, then those who are aware of being dead are the only ones not crazy. <laughs>